Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net, and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to show you how to paint a yellow kayak, so a first person point of view kayak on a lake, moonlit lake with some fall trees. Kind of a unique perspective painting, but I'm doing this on an 11 by 14 inch canvas. And the first thing I'm gonna do is lay out my, her my horizon line. So this line has already been drawn in at the four inch mark and my canvas is in the vertical position. So that horizon line is gonna be where our sky is and everything below that line is going to be our pretty sparkling water. And so I'm gonna start by painting our sky. So the sky is simple, it's two colors, the color thalo blue and titanium white. And I'm gonna add the color thalo green to my palette and that's gonna be used a little bit later when we paint the water. So I'm gonna start at the top of the canvas and I'm gonna work my way down. So sky first and then I'll do water. I'm using a three quarter inch flat wash brush and load it in the water and kind of tap it dry. I'm gonna start with the thalo blue. So I'm gonna start at the top of the canvas and I'm going to paint in an arc formation or an arc direction. So my strokes are going kind of curved. And um, so our sky is darkest at the top and it gets a little bit lighter as it goes to the horizon line. So I'm gonna go down with this thalo blue color about halfway of the sky area. I'm just gonna keep going in a curved direction. So go about halfway. And then when you reach about the halfway point, we're going to introduce our white. So without rinsing the brush, I'm gonna grab white just on the tip of the brush. I'm gonna start below the sky and I'm gonna gently blend that white back up into the sky. Uh, we don't want the top part of the sky to be bright, so just do a little bit of blending up into the blue, but not all the way up. And then when you get to the horizon line, it's gonna be hard to paint in an arc, so you can go ahead and just do left and right strokes in that area. So I'm just gonna gently blend it back up. If you need to add more of uh, darker blue at the top, you can. But then we're going to do the water. So the water is going in a horizontal direction instead of a curved direction. So that's how we're gonna get our water to kind of stand out. And we're going to start by adding a little bit more white to the tip of the brush so the water that's just under the horizon line is gonna be a little brighter than the sky. So that line will stand out. We can see where that line is and it's not gonna disappear. So left and right strokes with that light blue. And then we're gonna work our way down doing still left and right strokes, but I'm gonna gradually add more thalo blue to my brush so that the water gets darker. So our water is gonna fade from a light blue to that phthalo blue. Eventually it's gonna get into a pure phthalo blue right in the middle of the canvas. Um, so you're gonna keep going to about the halfway point of your water area and we're going to be introducing our phthalo green color here. I'm gonna go a little bit further down with this blue, so just grabbing the thalo blue. If you need to wipe your brush off because there's white streaks in it, you can go ahead and do that. A little bit more thalo blue. Then I'm gonna grab the thalo green on my brush. So this thalo green has a blue, it pulls a lot of blue, so it looks almost like a teal color, and it blends nicely with our thalo blue. So I'm gonna just grab that thalo green on my brush and paint it below the blue and blend it up into the blue. So the blue and the green are gonna to mix together to make kind of a dark teal looking color. And so I'm just gonna introduce that color into the water, blend it up into the blue and start bringing my phthalo green down. A Little bit of white in there and I'm just gonna kind of make this color on my palette. It's kind of a white phthalo green and phthalo blue combination um, just to get some color variation in the water down there. So a little bit, some areas where the water's a little bit lighter over here, maybe the water's a little bit shallow in this area so it's a bit lighter and just kind of kind of blend that up into the water. Don't want to over blend because I like all the different blues and teals in this. I don't want to have it all meshed together and be the same color. So if you keep painting over it, it's just going to over blend. Um, this bottom part of our lake, I want it to be a little bit dark. So I'm just going to 
add some more of the blue and the green to get that area to be a little bit darker down there. And occasionally, because I still have white on my brush, I might pull a few white streaks in there and that's okay because the color does not have to be a perfect gradient of one color to the next. It's a lake. So some areas might be a little bit darker, some lighter, depending on how the light's hitting the water. So it doesn't have to be a perfect blend of all of your colors. So they're a nice, pretty combination of teals and blue and light blue. So when we're done with that, we're gonna go ahead, rinse our brush and set it to the side. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the stars next. So I like to use an old toothbrush for the stars. Um, you can also just flick a regular paintbrush or um, tap two brushes together. But I like to load water on the brush first and kind of dry it off a bit. You don't want too much water on the brush because you don't want your paint splatters to be too um, drippy. Um, so load it with the white, test it out first, and then flick it. So I did test this out before I flicked it. If um, you don't want it to be too drippy or too thick, because then you don't want you don't want it to ruin your painting. But when you have a nice consistency of slightly watered down white, you get some nice pretty stars. So I did it in the sky, a little bit on the water because some of the stars might be reflecting in the water. So you don't have to cover your lake while you're doing it. It's okay if you get some paint splatters on your lake. Okay, so then, um, we're going to do our land. So if your sky was still soaking wet up here, I would wait for this to dry before doing this because you don't want your black to get all um, melt into that previous color. So when it's dry, we're going to use Mars Black. Um, I recommend slightly watering down the black so it's a little bit flowy. And I'm using a number eight round brush. So I'm going to paint the land. And this is above the horizon line. So that straight line we drew in the beginning, this land is situated on top of that line. So I'm just going to use my brush to paint an uneven kind of a mountain hilly area. But this is going to be where our trees are going to be living on. And then a few little strokes of black, uh, very loosely horizontal, right under the land, just to give that area a little bit of shadow into the water, reflection in the water. And then I'm going to do the trees. So using the same brush, I'm going to do use the tip of that brush to paint a vertical line. And then at the top of the vertical line, I'm just going to do these tiny little strokes for the branches that are going downwards and the trees forming a conical triangular shape. I'm gonna do this again, so straight line up and then stroke each of those branches in a diagonal direction going down, forming the shape of the tree. So it's up to you how many trees you want. I'm gonna do trees that are going across the entire land area. It looks nice when your trees have different heights. So some of them are shorter, some taller. So I'm just gonna keep repeating this technique. If you don't like doing this with the round brush, I think this area would be too small to do it with the fan brush, um, but you can try it with a little flat brush if you wanna do flat brush trees instead of round brush trees. But um, because this area is so tiny, I find using that little tip of the round brush um, easiest because you can get into those small areas. Um, so I am going to go silent here for a bit, but I'm just repeating this technique all throughout and making different heights and uh, sizes of trees.
Another thing you can do with these trees to create distance is do just vertical lines. So these little vertical lines way in the distance will make it look like there's little, not little, but trees far, far away. So you can add those between some of your trees to create the distance. Um, so we're done with our tree line and we're gonna move on to the next step. I'm going to demonstrate how to paint this moon. So I loaded some fresh titanium white on my palette and I'm gonna still use my, actually no, I'm not gonna use my number eight. I'm gonna switch to the number four round. So a little bit smaller round brush because we have a small circle to paint. Load it in the white. In the upper right area, I am just going to paint a white circle. So I'm gonna kind of start in the middle of this moon and start in the middle and I'm just gonna stroke outwards to form the circle shape. I let the paint kind of run dry on the outer part of the circle because the outer part's going to have some dry brush strokes to create the reflection and the moon beams that are going around the moon outwards into the sky. Um, so it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. We can kind of fix that here. Um, so I'm going to grab a little bit of phthalo blue. I'm going to do some moon texture. So I just like to dot the blue and kind of let it blend in with the white because it's such a tiny moon, we do not have to be realistic at all with this. So just a few dots of blue that kind of gently blend with the white is all you need. And then I'm gonna grab that white, kind of define my circle here a little bit, outline the outer part of the circle so it's brighter. Just kind of dab the rest of that blue into there. Um, and then I'm going to do those dry brush strokes that I was talking about. So with only a little bit of paint on your brush, in fact, you can wipe the paint off after you load it. So it's not a lot. It's got to be very dry. So you see how translucent that paint is because there's barely any white paint on my brush. So I'm painting in circular radiating strokes around the moon. And that's going to create those, um, that reflection from the moon into the sky. So kind of swirly, you can go outwards as much as possible and just kind of let that fade out into the rest of the sky. A lot of that's gonna be disguised by some of our leaves that are um, up in that area. Um, but then I will be demonstrating next how to do the reflection in the water. So the reflection was done with the round brush as well, the number four round brush and the color titanium white. So I'm just gonna start below the moon. It's gonna create a vertical column area of left and right horizontal strokes. Um, and I'm just gonna loosely paint these left and right strokes. Um, it's gonna be kind of a smaller, skinnier area um, just below the moon. So we got perspective. We have the reflection that gets wider and longer towards the bottom of the canvas and shorter strokes um, towards the horizon line. So that creates the illusion that the there's distance in our water. So just doing very loose left and right strokes in the water. You can kind of vary your strokes so it could be kind of thicker in some areas and thinner in other areas. The reflection is mostly under the moon, but you can add a few little white lines here and there all throughout the water. Just to give that water some water texture everywhere else, but you don't have to do as much as the area that we did just under the moon. Next, I'm gonna do some sparkles in the water. So I'm doing this with a 10-0 liner brush, a little detail brush that has the longer bristles. Load it in the white, and I'm gonna do a little plus sign, and then little diagonal lines coming out around it. So a little plus sign, diagonal, diagonal, just to make it look like the water is sparkling. So you can do this, um, as many sparkle stars as you want in the water. It looks really pretty when it's right next to some of the reflections. I'm gonna do several of those all throughout. 
So it really helps when you pinch the bristles of this brush. It makes those bristles all gathered together so you can get those very thin lines. A teeny bit of water, but just make sure the water's not dripping down those bristles. And then I'm just gonna do a few up in the sky as well. So I'm gonna do the same thing that I did in the water. So a little plus sign, little diagonal lines. Um, you can do as many stars as you want. Uh, we could also wait to the very end of this to do these kind of stars, especially since some of our trees will be covering up in that area, some of the leaves. So you can wait to the very end to do this. Um, you can also do little dots, clustered dots of stars up in the sky. If you want to do constellations, you can. Um, but like I said, keep in mind there's going to be a lot of um, foliage up in that area. Okay, so we're going to do our boat next, um, our boat shape. But this canvas needs to dry before I can do any of this. So go ahead, dry it, take a break, come back, and I will demonstrate how to do the drawing. So I'm using a white chalk pencil. You can also use a regular pencil or a piece of chalk to do this. So I made a mark at the 5.5 inches high and our kayak is roughly six inches wide. So five and a half inches make a little mark kind of in the middle of the canvas and six inches wide on the bottom and try to center it. So I'm just gonna kind of take that and line it up vertically so I have the center of the, the kayak there. There's my center. And then I'm going to sketch down and kind of curve on the left and the right. To try to make it symmetrical. It doesn't have to be perfect, I suppose. So it's six inches wide, five and a half inches tall, curving the lines on each side. So that is all the drawing that we're gonna be doing in this painting, so super easy. And then um, you can use any brush for this, but I happen to grab the 12 Bright Brush and I'm gonna use Titanium White. So basically, we're going to paint the kayak in solid Titanium White. So this is um, going to allow the boat to be bright yellow um, because yellow is not very opaque. So we're gonna paint it white, let the white dry, and then we'll do our second layer with yellow. Go ahead and paint that all in solid. Doesn't really matter the directions of the strokes, but I'm letting my strokes go kind of contour in the shape of the direction of the shape. Also kind of curved and then straight in the middle. Fill it in solid and also you don't have to have it be a hundred percent solid so if there's a little bit of that bluish water kind of showing through the white that's okay you don't need to apply two coats to this you only need one coat of the paint so i'm going to go silent here while i finish this step up We're going to have to let this white dry before we can continue on and do any of the yellow and the details on our kayak. So I'm going to move along and start doing our trees. So there's two tree branches in this painting and I did this with the color Mars Black and the number eight round brush. Slightly water down your black so that it can flow. So I'm going to start over here on the left with the larger branch and I'm going to do pressure on the brush and when you do pressure on the brush that's going to create your thicker stroke i'm going to have it kind of go diagonally up to almost the horizon line and we're going to have our branch split off into smaller branches so to do the smaller stroke you're just releasing pressure on the brush you're not pressing too hard on it you're getting thinner using more of the tip of the brush to create the thinner stroke and we're going to have our branches go to a thin point and to use to get that stroke to go thinner, you're just releasing the pressure and using just the tip of the brush. 
So I'm going to do one more branch. So press pressure to create the, the base of the branch is a little bit thicker. Release the pressure and it goes a lot thinner. And then using the tip of the brush and I'm stroking outwards to create the different branches that are going in different angles. Tip of the brush, little branches that are going outwards diagonally. And then you can just keep creating a lot more little branches. Um, just keep doing that until you're satisfied with all the branches that you have. Um, a lot of this is going to be covered up with little uh, fall leaves, little leaves. So just keep that in mind and do some smaller branches. I don't want to cover my moon at all. So I'm just going to make sure that any of my branches go around the moon. But I'm just using the very, very tip of that brush to create those thinner lines. Um, if you need to switch to like a liner brush, you can use that to help you create those thinner lines. Just creating this part a little bit thicker, kind of uneven and wavy along the edges of that branch. So there's our first branch. And I'm going to do the same thing over here on the right. But this one is going to be hanging down. So it's going to start out thick at the top. And it's going to go thinner as we work our way down. So thick, release the pressure to go thin. And then I'm just gonna let that branch out into two different branches. Um, just try not to get this one too close to your kayak um, because we're gonna, it's gonna kinda mess with the perspective of this painting a little bit when it's too close and we have the leaves to work with as well. So I'm just gonna do little tiny, um, thin branch lines on our branch. So next I'm going to rinse that brush, set it to the side. Um, the white is dry for the most part, um, but I want to go ahead and erase this extra chalk line that I have left. So I'm just taking my eraser, going over that, make sure it's nice and clean, no chalk lines showing through. You may not have chalk lines, but I tend to not fill in my drawings the way that I drew them, leaving chalk lines behind, but it easily erases. Um, so we're gonna start painting the kayak in, and I'm gonna go ahead and load my palette with two colors, actually. There's a little bit of orange in, in that um, yellow color, um, but primary yellow, and the color cad red medium hue and um, freshen your mars black if you need to still using that number eight round brush and i'm actually going to paint a half circle first on the bottom of my kayak so that's the opening of the kayak so with the black and um, it's about two or three fingers high so you can kind of estimate that half circle shape so just paint that line and then rinse your brush off and set that to, um, or still use that brush. So you can use any brush for this. I'm still gonna use the number eight round brush um, just because I want my strokes to be kind of curved. Um, but you can use your 12 bright brush if you want for this. But we're gonna first start out by painting our kayak a solid coat of this primary yellow color. So I'm just painting in the direction of the shape. So curved on the edges, get right there and paint over all of that white, your yellow should show up nice and bright because of that first white coat that we applied to it. I'm just gonna fill that in, strokes going in the direction of the shape. And then we wanna just be really careful when we go around that half circle shape because that black's not dry. We don't wanna accidentally drag some of our black paint into our yellow. So get really close to it, but try not to get any of that black up into our yellow. Then I'm going to grab a bit of white and do some blending, wet on wet blending here with the white. Just kind of dragging some of that white into the kayak to give it some depth, dimension, um, by letting my strokes go in that curved contouring direction. So just by curving it, and I'm not letting that white blend all the way in the yellow. I'm going to kind of leave it streaky and unblending so you see a few strokes of white in there. And I'm going to actually wipe my brush off here just a bit, kind of dragging that yellow down on the side of the canvas, 
wipe the brush off, grabbing just the white. And I'm gonna just do a lighter, brighter part on the right side of the kayak. So if you look at the finished results, um, the right side of the kayak is lighter and brighter and the left side a little bit darker and it has some shadowy areas. So just getting that white, of course it's gonna blend really quick with that yellow because that yellow is thick and still wet. But I'm just trying not to let that blend all the way, just a few streaks of the white. Then I'm going to make orange. So that orange is going to be our darker yellow area. So I'm going to make um, an, a darker orange color by mixing the red and yellow together. A little bit more yellow than red to make that orange. And I'm just going to very gently, um, you don't want too much orange on your brush because this is going to take over really fast here um, if we did that. Very gently on the left side, adding those orange strokes and letting those kind of curve and blend in with the rest of the yellow. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse, or not rinse, but dry off the brush and grabbing black. So on the left side, well actually not on the left side, we're not doing the shading thing yet. We're gonna paint in our um, inside of our opening of the kayak. So that half circle, is going to be painted a solid coat of black. If you look closely, the top part of the opening is a little bit lighter. So I'm going to grab some white and kind of mix it with that orange on my palette. A little bit of black still on my brush still. So it's kind of like a, a light grayish color. If you want, you can just make a gray by mixing black and white. And I'm just gonna take that gray and gently add that to the top and blend it down into the black. So that black is still wet. It may not show up that light right away. We can always wait for this to dry and then go back in and add some more gray blending into it. But then I'm gonna take that black and outline the very top part of our opening. So we have the top part is outlined black and then we have some shading underneath that. And then the left side of our kayak is outlined very loosely with the black. The right side is not outlined black. So just taking that using the tip of the brush and doing some outlining. So there's not a lot more detail we can do to our kayak just because everything's wet. So we're gonna wait for all that to dry before we do the cords and uh, work a little bit more on the shading of the opening. Um, but while that's drying, we're gonna go ahead and do the easy part. Um, that's the fall leaves. So. Um, and you don't have to do fall leaves. You can leave it without leaves. You can do green leaves. You can do pink for cherry blossoms. Um, that's up to you. But I'm just using the red and yellow on my palette and the orange color that was mixed with the red and the yellow. And I'm just using my number eight round brush. And all I'm doing is dotting clusters of dots on the ends of the branches. You can even introduce some white into the leaves. So the white makes some of the colors pop and look brighter. I'm just going to do that all throughout um, this branch down here, and then I'll be doing it up into the branch at the top. So lots of dots, um, just like I said, vary the colors, and you don't even have to rinse between your colors. You can just grab yellow, and then grab red, and then grab white, and do little dots all throughout the tree. And the step takes a little bit of time to do, so I am going to go silent here while I continue to do all my little fall leaves in my branches.
The next thing I'm gonna do is add some highlight to the tree branches. This is optional if you don't wanna do this, um, but I'm gonna make a sort of a medium gray, medium to light gray color on my palette by mixing white with black. And I'm just gonna take my round brush and very loosely, just on the inner edges of the branches that are facing the moon, where that moon would be hitting the tree, reflecting it a little bit, just adding a very subtle highlight to the tree branches, gives their branches a little bit of depth. Um, you don't need to have this be super thick. You can even take your black and kind of blend it back into the tree branch. So just very loosely do your highlight. This is still that number eight round brush and just simple. You can even grab a bit of brighter white and just do a very subtle white outline just on the very edge of it. Gives it an extra pop of light. Next, I'm going to demonstrate how I did the grass pieces that are hanging out in our water. And so we're gonna, we need to make a green. I know we have phthalo green on our palette, but that green's not going to work for us. We're actually going to make green by mixing the primary yellow with the phthalo blue. So a little bit more yellow than blue to make the green. I'd say maybe two parts yellow, one part blue, and a very, very, very small amount of black. And that's going to get you a dark green color. So we're going to do this with the eight round brush using just the tip of it. And I'm just going to paint little grass lines sticking up out of the water using just the tip. So I'm just flicking my brush at different angles to create the grass. I didn't mention that adding a little bit of water to that is really going to help the flow and it's a very thin stroke. It's not thick at all. So just adding the dab of water and then adding that into the color is going to be helpful. So different um, thinness and thickness in the grass. Some of the grass towards the bottom is a little bit thicker because it's closer. Um, and then I'm going to do another layer of grass. This is the lighter green color. So you can even add a bit of white in there to make it brighter. So we have a variety of different colors in our grass. So this is the lighter piece. These are the lighter pieces. So same thing, um, but we're not covering all the darker ones. We're just creating new little grass blade pieces all throughout. Then I'm going to make some little horizontal lines under most of the grass blades just to make it look like they're kind of in the water, maybe causing a ripple or a shadowy area. But I'm just going to do these little dark horizontal lines kind of all throughout, um, maybe in areas that don't have grass, so maybe kind of further out into the water. Maybe there's some water texture with those dark lines out there. Um, don't, they don't really have to, maybe they're lily pads. We don't know. They're just kind of adding some variety of color and texture in there. So just a few little horizontal lines with that darker color where our grass is. I did just a few lines up into the distance, up closer, further in the distance. And so our uh, kayak uh, should be dry by now. If it's not, you may want to take a break, maybe dry it and come back. I'm going to do some more detail work on this, starting with our opening. Um, just titanium white on my brush here. And all I'm doing is outlining the outer part of that half circle shape. So that part I did white. I'm just outlining it. And then rinse and do the cords. So make sure that, that all that yellow is dry before doing this because we don't want our black to run into our ye yellow and get all messy. But I'm gonna start by doing the dots of where those cords are connected. Um, so we can do just the, this is the number four round brush, by the way. So I did two dots on each side, another set of two dots, and another 
set of two dots. So three sets of two dots. And I also did a dot right at the top of the point. And then I'm going to connect them very loosely. Um, this line is not thick at all. So I connected those two in kind of a triangular shape. And these ones are going to connect kind of diagonally. Um, it's kind of important the way that you do these diagonal lines to have them be a little bit curved because the there's form on the top of that. So it kind of curves at the top. Um, so right there kind of curves. And again, it's a very loose line. It's not the same thickness. It's um, you want to just paint it as thin as possible. Um, and I did one more cord and connected that and this one, I guess we can connect this way. So very loosely, you don't need to go back over your lines and redo them. The line is very loose and not continuous. So there are our cords. And then I'm going to do a little bit of shading over here on the left. So you're just using the black. Um, wipe off your brush if you need to because this is dry brush style. Um, gives it a little bit of shadow in that area. Kind of adds to the depth of our kayak. So not very dark at all. Just a few little streaks of that. And then up here, I did this highlight earlier, but it was blending too much into the black. So I'm just taking that white gray color and kind of, or dry brushing some white right there at the top and just kind of letting that fade away to give that top part a little bit of highlight. And then if there are leaves on our branches, there might be some leaves floating in the water. So I'm just taking my orange and yellow color and I'm just doing little dots of leaves kind of floating in the water gives a pop of color in there as well next I'm going to add some more of these sparkling stars in the water because I really think how I really think that they give a pretty effect to the water the whimsical nighttime scene with the sparkling water um, so that's what I'm doing with the that same little 10 zero liner brush. And then I um, also did a few white little lines of grass. Maybe those grass pieces are brighter in that area. A few little horizontal reflection lines in there. And then um, if you want, you can add some more stars in the sky. Since we're all done with our tree foliage, we can go in and add stars where we want stars to be kind of showing in the sky so I'll be doing that as well and it does look really pretty when you put a few stars kind of in between some of the tree um, leaves so it kind of looks like maybe the stars are sparkling through the trees so I did one extra sparkle star up there in the tree. And then if you want to, you can do your paddle. So um, placement of my paddle, if I would have done this painting differently, I would have done it on the left because we got kind of messy here with our trees, our tree foliage. Um, couldn't decide if I wanted that to go under our tree or in front of it. Um, but so for the paddle, um, we're just doing that. You just paint the end shape of it, kind of an upside down triangle shape that's curved on all the corners. And then you do your diagonal line and that's going to go all the way off the canvas so we don't see the other, the, or the end of it. And um, just going to define this shape a little bit more. So I'm just using the four round brush and the Mars Black. It's also helpful maybe if um, you want to draw that out with chalk first. If you're worried that you're going to mess that up, that's another option. And I'm just going to make my handle a little bit thicker here. I'll grab some titanium white and let that white kind of blend with the black to give it a little bit of highlight. Maybe the paddle it has a, more of a gray color to it. So I'm just Letting that white gently blend with the black. That white kind of gives it some depth as well.
and I'll let that white gently blend on the left side of the paddle, give that part a little bit of highlight, bring that white down a little bit more. I'm gonna add just the white over here on the left side, just to slightly outline it, gives it, lets it pop a little bit against the darker colors that it's next to. But like I said, I probably would have done the paddle on the left side because a little bit too busy in that area messes with the perspective a little bit, but it is what it is. The rest of this demonstration, I'm just touching up the paddle, but that is the conclusion of this tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed painting Moonlight Kayak Ride with me too. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.